Good morning, and God bless you. We're delighted to have you with us here this morning. Maybe this is your first time tuning in and joining us. We extend a warm welcome to you and trust you're blessed with what you hear today. We want to begin with prayer. We want to pray for our nation and our world and the nation of Israel. We also want to pray for Cornerstone Pentecostal Church, but you pray for your pastor and your congregation in that slot. And then lastly, we want to pray for our brothers and sisters around the world. Maybe you have a special and spoken request. This is a perfect time to make that known unto God. Let's pray together. Father, we love you, we praise you, and we worship you. God, I thank you for the abundance of all things. It's just such an honor and a privilege and a magnificent opportunity to live for God. I thank you for that. Father, I pray for a great and effectual door of utterance opened up to our nation and our world that we can communicate these truths to this world. And I also pray for the nation of Israel. I pray for your special protection um, with them in this hour. Father, I also pray for Cornerstone Pentecostal Church Pray that you'll continue to open up the windows of heaven, pour out your divine favor and blessing, and lastly, our brothers and sisters around the world, furnishing each and every one of them with a hedge of protection. We ask all of this in the name, above every name, the name of Jesus. Everyone said amen. Well, as you can tell, my voice is on the blink, and I think part of it is due to this weather change, very cool mornings. It just is what it is, but I am so delighted to be here with you this morning. We want to go to 1 Timothy chapter number 1, and we're going to start in verse number 1, 1 Timothy 1 and 1. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the commandment of God our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ, which is our hope, unto Timothy, my own son in the faith, grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and Jesus Christ our Lord. Unto Timothy, my own son in the faith. <clears throat> This is probably going to be the last in this short little series. Um, and this is on the masculine journey, mentoring, mentoring. Now, mentoring is a reality. It's a reality, not just in the church, but it's a reality and an incredibly important dynamic in relationships. But it is a particular kind of a relationship. Here in the Word of God, you're seeing probably um, the most, right off the top of my theological head, I would have to say that the mentoring process that took place between the Apostle Paul and Timothy is probably going to be the New Testament's greatest example. But I really do believe that there are different examples of this throughout the Word of God. You have Moses and, and Joshua. You have Samuel and Eli. Um, even, even perhaps Elijah and Elisha, because Elisha was required to stay so close as to see Elijah, to be close enough to see that at the time of his departure. Maybe even, um, oh, 
Gehazi and Elisha. And I realized that Gehazi was to be the servant to the prophet. But there certainly, that close of a relationship certainly would qualify for, um, to fulfill what I would call true biblical mentoring. Mentoring is critical for people that are first generation and even maybe even some rare cases where people are generationally Pentecostal. The reason why is because I believe that depending on the home life and the structuring of the families and the the interconnectedness of the family structure is critical to personal development. There are many psychologists in our world today that have studied where our world is at sociologically. Some have even coined the phrase where it is a suspended animated adolescence and where Adolescence, it's, it's, it's difficult for, for men, particular men, to move through adolescence into true, what we would call maturity and adulthood, and more specifically, manhood. The reason for that is, is that there are so many hangups that, that cause men not to be able to relate. Video games, pornography, um, smartphones, social media, um, you have a more privatized life, a more isolated life, and where genuine relationships, and it takes a genuine relationship to truly learn how to communicate, be accountable, and to grow, to truly mature. And so in our modern culture, we have what is called a sustained adolescence where, um, and I realized in my own life when I came to God at the age of 30 that I mentioned uh, in several devotionals ago that I was basically, I was an 18-year-old or a 19-year-old in a 30-year-old body where I was just continuing to relive emotionally, mentally, responsibly, my whole, my whole epistemology, my outward view, my inward view was trapped in adolescence. One of the things, at least in my own, and it was a blessing from God, when you receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost, don't pay any attention to that phone going off. It goes off all day long around here that there must be relationships. It is impossible to fully grow and mature and become without relationships. You have to have relationships. Well, people are coming to God with all these kind of fragmented, fragmented, um, oftentimes enculturated perceptions and views and broken relationships, woundedness, just just faulty thinking, faulty perceptions, faulty conclusions about the world, about themselves, about relationships, about their parents, about the world around them, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. When you experience the gospel, repentance of your sins, baptism in Jesus' name, and the infilling of the Holy Ghost, there is a massive regeneration. And in this regeneration, there is a realignment and a refocusing of relationships. Timothy is a perfect place to talk about mentoring. Timothy came from a blended household. In fact, he is one of the, if he's not the very first example of a preacher in the New Testament that comes from a blended household. There may have been others, but we may not know anything about their background, but in Timothy's case, 
his mother and grandmother were Jewish, but his father was a Gentile. In the 21st century, that probably wouldn't raise too many eyebrows, but in the first century, it was absolutely culturally a no-no to have that type of, of intermarriage coming from those two different backgrounds. So he came from a blended household. The path of Timothy and Paul crossing absolutely became a door that opened up to Timothy that introduced him to potentials and possibilities that never would have been thought possible. It came to the place where their relationship, as you see here, and Paul mentions this, Timothy as being his son more than one time in the gospel. Timothy grows, he becomes, he becomes a model follower. And at this juncture, I want to say that in order to qualify in being a mentor, you have to be an example. You must be an example. The Apostle Paul became the model example to this young man, Timothy. And he followed in the footsteps of Timothy to the point that where Timothy went from becoming a follower and he himself became an example. And that really, that really underscores, I believe, really the importance of mentoring. And I think that it happens so supernaturally, organically. I remember coming into the church that I met uh, a man by the name of Paul Bertram. He is now a pastor in the San Diego area. Um, by no design of his or mine, he had been in the church uh, for many years, uh, all of his life, really. And there was just a connection. I believe it was a divine, divinely orchestrated connection. I was coming out of a absolute fragmented drug, alcoholic, absolute hedonistic lost lifestyle coming into the church. And because of the spirit of God in me, and working with me where I was, there was just an immediate bond that formed between, he's now my, my brother-in-law, developed that has developed into a lifelong friendship, even to, unto this day. And I thank God, I value these things. Ladies and gentlemen, there has to be some things in your life that are sacred, that are not for sale. I don't care how big, and prosperous and successful you become. You never, if you're spiritually healthy, in, in my opinion, you never forget where you came from and you never forget the people that God used to help you to become. Um, and when I talk about success, I'm not talking about that in a worldly sense. I'm talking about becoming a leader yourself, becoming fulfilling the will of God in your life and becoming blessed and establishing a family. And in my case, I'm now a pastor, but I realized where I came from. And it started with the friendship of a man that was in another church. And just in that dynamic relationship, in that dynamic relationship, I saw for the very first time in my life really how a man of God, a saint of God, a child of God should live. It's not enough. This is a big deal. And I don't want to get too far out here, but I want to tell you that there are people that are coming into the church in the 21st century that have to have mentoring. And I'm using that term mentoring in the, biblical, in the biblical sense, I would call it an example, a godly pattern, one that you can look at in living, breathing terms about their lifestyle, their conduct, their, their behavior, 
their conversation, how they treat other people, how they pray, how they're coming in and going out, how they live for God. It's not enough just to say, well, the church doors are open, come in and be there. The Holy Ghost that was in me drew me like a magnet. I wanted this. I desired this. I wanted to grow. I wanted to develop. I wanted to become. And you have to have these components in place for there to be genuine mentoring. There has to be a desire there. And I believe that God, through his orchestrating of these things, brings people together and 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 puts people in your life. Don't ask them to pay your bills and don't ask them things that you should be doing for yourself. Enjoy that relationship as being a spiritual thing, a godly thing, a precious thing. How do I know this? Because at 30 years of age, one of the very first things that God led me to do was to go out and get a job. I am not going to become a ward of the church. I'm not going to be helpless and a victim. God delivered me from all that nonsense. It was time for me to go out and get a job. And now that I had a job, it was time for me to develop as as a man, as, as being a masculine specimen that needed development. And I am so thankful that God provided that for me. I'm very honest about this. I'm very transparent about this. And I'm telling you that this is a huge factor in the church today. Don't allow yourself some stupid, silly pride of saying, I'm already good. Uh, I, 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 I've already got a job and da, 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 da. That is nonsense. That is absolutely going to work against an individual's development and achieving the perfect will of God in your life. My brother-in-law was one person that I could honestly say I really believe was a mentor in my life. My pastor um, was a mentor in my life. And my pastor and I were never buddies. And that is not the will of God to become buddies. But it was like it, there was a healthy, a healthy distance. And I respected that distance. And my pastor today is somebody that I... Uh, revere very highly, and that relationship is sacred to me. It is not for sale. It is it is it is priceless, and you have to you have to value these kinds of things. There were other men in the church, and other leaders that I looked up to, because I was coming into this, and it was a it was a sincere thing. It's a powerful thing. I'm looking at this relationship between Paul and Timothy, and I'm seeing that as Timothy gave himself to this, as Timothy followed his pattern in the apostolic faith, that Timothy himself received a call into the ministry. At one point, he was the pastor at Ephesus, arguably one of the most thunderous, powerful churches uh, of the churches of Asia Minor. Mentoring is a powerful thing, and it's not only something I think that is limited uh, to masculinity, but I believe also that there can be women and young ladies that come into the church that need a godly example. This is a powerful principle in the Word of God. And I would have to tell you that as the church continues to move into enemy territory and move into the 21st century, that this these kinds of relationships are extremely important in the local church. It is, it is critical that the church of the living God is being exactly what they're supposed to be because there are people watching. There are people that are listening. They're listening to how you pray. They're watching to how you interact with other people. They're watching in how you carry yourself. They're watching how you, how you live for God, how you worship, how you conduct yourself. It is critical that we have mentors in this hour, and I believe that we do, and the important role that these fulfill in the development 
the masculine journey, they are absolutely invaluable. God bless you. I hope this has been a blessing to you today. Maybe you should forward this to somebody, a young man in your congregation. Don't let him get stuck in some nonsense of video games. That Listen, that is counterproductive. That is counterproductive. To live some anonymous life behind a, a, a computer screen is not spiritually healthy. That's right, I said it, and we are not backing up on that. It's the truth. God bless you. Enjoy your day. We'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow.